Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And in today's episode, we're going to focus on tying up lots of loose ends before we start building across the river. And I wanted to show you a little something that you may have caught in the last episode if you were really paying attention. And that is, I've brought an asset into Verde Beach. Uh, so one of the really neat things that happened recently is that I had someone reach out to me on the Discord server, definitely sleeping, um, and mention that they were making some billboards that I could use in Verde Beach and Clearwater County. And so they put together a neat pack and I'm going to share it in the community tab and I'll have a link in the description of this video. So there's a couple of different billboards, some of which they made and some of which they received from uh, Tyler Hunt, AKA Lauren J. Burner on the Discord. And these are wonderful looks. So this one, uh, you know, we have this one that says morning mulligans with Phil, <laughs> love it. And this one that says noisy neighbors, why not try eminent domain? So we have a couple of others as well and I wanna go through those quickly. So we'll place one here for now. And another one right here. Another one right here. We're gonna move these, but I, I just wanna take a look. So this one just says, take your place in the sun, Verde Beach. This one, just the stylized Verde Beach logo. Very cool. This one right here, a vacation so nice you won't need a mulligan. And this one, another Verde Beach logo. Then over here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. That one's kind of dark, but I think that's mainly due to the location I placed it in. Let's move it. Yeah, don't forget to like, leave a subscribe, and comment. And then this one it looks better most of the time. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, I think we might actually add this close to the university. There we go. It looks like uh, the sunlight's hitting it just right here. Don't sleep on your education. <laughs> and then uh, we, we obviously need to move some trees so we can see that you shouldn't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. <laughs> so I like I love these. These are these are wonderful. So these are easier to use with Move It. One of the one of the struggles is you have to be able to plop it on a roadside. So you can see if I went to try to plop this over here, it's just not going to work. A way that we could get around that would be to do something like this. So we could draw a line on the side of the highway. Ooh, that's not gonna work. I thought I thought that, that would work. How about this? There we go. So now we have it on the side of the highway. Without move it, there is a way to make it happen. Take your place in the sun and then Verde Beach we could have also put that in the center of the highway. That would look that would look really slick too. So Got a couple more of these that I want to move around and then I will talk about exactly what we're going to do today. So this one right here, a vacation so nice you won't need a mulligan. This one makes a ton of sense in my opinion right at the airport. Actually, we'll move this to the other side of the road so you see it. Oh, it's the wrong side of the billboard. That's okay. We'll have it right here. You'll still see it on the way out of town and that's what I'm hoping for. We'll get rid of a couple of trees to clear the view. Perfect. So if you were here, you would see that. Okay. So the other thing about that, those is that they're part of the, I mean, they're park assets. So if you do get the pack, they'll be in the park assets and plazas, um, but different things on either side. Very cool. And thank you so much. That, that That's the community going above and beyond. And I really, really appreciate that. So. The, th the types of things we're going to take care of today are a few fold. So it's not necessarily naming. I'm going to get to that soon, but I want to take care of some of these zoning issues first. Um, when we get to naming, I think that the way that I'm going to do it this time, uh, I'm going to go through the, the Patreon supporters and choose some names randomly and rename some of these streets. Um, you know, there, there are other ways to do it, but I, I'd love to, to, to kind of pay it forward there. So. I appreciate them and I'm going to show my thanks. Um, in the future, I do want to set up a, a form that we could use to, to, to get names. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna focus on filling in some of these areas where we need zoning. So you can see that there are a ton of areas where I just haven't finished zoning, haven't completed the roadway network. There are more connections that could be made. We're gonna make those connections today and fill in some of these areas. Other thing that we're gonna do, 
thinking about the university. Um, so if you go in and we take a look at what we've done, we've unlocked buildings now that we've never placed. So I want to go through, make sure that I have all of these different unique buildings placed. Like for instance, the chess club. I don't think I have a chess club on campus. So the buildings that I can place on campus, I'm going to place them there. And so let's see, it's like the chess club, the media library, I think we have. So I think it's the chess club, the statue too, and then the school of science. Now, if you look, this is a monster building. There's no way I'm going to fit this in here. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that this is how it is, but I think it opens up an opportunity. The opportunity is Oak Garden could be an offshoot of the university. We could potentially get this over here as long as we can make our campus area extend over here. So uh, imagine Oak Garden being a laboratory for the university, not just, um, you know, uh, associated with the university, like uh, the Sterling, Zoo, uh, Sterling Family Zoo, where there's a close association and tie there. For this, that nature preserve is going to be the university's nature preserve. It's going to be off. It's going to still be in the city, but set off on its own a bit. And it, I'm going to place the building there and we're not going to develop this yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there, I promise. Uh, that's going to be shortly after we cross the river. The other thing I want to do, I want to take a look at this madness that I set up here because I think that we can do better. Um, one of the things that I forgot when I placed this extra metro station here was that we have some really awesome assets that came in the most recent uh, uh, trains and, and uh, bridges uh, content creator pack and I don't know why I didn't think to use it here but if I use that here I could have these two lines meet up. And the other thing I want to do is look at some other forms of transportation. So we have, uh, for instance, at this Metropolitan Airport, we have the ability to use helicopters, but we haven't done it yet. So I want to, to work that in. We also have blimps. I'm not quite ready for blimps, so we're not going to go there just yet. But uh, this is one thing that I do want to give a shot to. So I think we're, we're going to start. I want to start with some of the changes around the university. And I think the very first one is going to be related to Metro. But before I forget, one other change so it was pointed out that i have made a mistake over here and that is that these two lines are still conflicting now i heard that i can move the stop if i hit either control or shift okay and after fiddling around with this and doing a little bit of research i see that it's actually not possible to switch the side of the train station unless you have the multi-platform enabler mod which is where the shift uh, functionality comes in. So if you have that mod, you can separate these two uh, tracks. You can see that the yellow line appears to be doing what I wanted to do anyway, which is kind of funny, uh, but I wanted the blue line to pop up here. Um, either way, it's working, so maybe I should just <laughs> let good enough be good enough. Anyway, so we are going to do something better over here because we have this kind of mess of train tracks. Uh, metro tracks rather so the content creator pack is where we're going to find an asset that suits us a little bit better so this sunken bypass metro is likely the best choice for us uh, that said it is large it's very large so i don't know that that one's going to work perfectly maybe this dual sunken metro will work a little bit better let's take it out of here and see yeah, it's just, it's kind of tough the way this fits in. We might be able to make it work like this. It's just kind of wonky. So I think we're going to try the sunken dual platform and just see what happens. I am, cannot promise that this is going to work. I might need to come back to what I had before, but you'll never know until you try. Okay, so now I've reconstructed the roads and the zoo, and you can see that it was a lot of work. So I basically had to completely rebuild Greenaway. So actually, I'm not seeing my road names on. Okay, so now I have road names on. We just want to make sure that we don't inadvertently lose this. So Greenaway is correct now. 
So this all got moved. The nice thing is we're able to kind of center some of this stuff up. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good, especially in comparison to what it used to be like. Now, our main uh, consideration is gonna be all of these metro lines coming in here. So we're gonna need to clean those up. So let's do that real quick. Okay, I think that we are in a good spot with those. We just need to get all of our stops relocated. Okay, so I think I have these in a mostly good location. I kind of would like to separate the yellow and green lines though, or yellow and, and, and white lines. Although there might be some synergy in having those occur at the same location. No, we're gonna we're we're gonna actually separate those. So what we have now is the brown line on top, the yellow line being the through line. The brown line will intersect there, and then the white line on the bottom. So hopefully this clears things up and makes it a bit more legible. And it is a really neat looking asset through here. Something you'll be able to see as you walk on the side here. I do think that we need some sort of fence. We don't want Looky Lose to come and, you know, uh, for some reason decide to, to look down there and fall. <laughs> so I would assume that the university is going to be very conservative in that way. And as a result, here we go. Okay, so. It, 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 now you can walk right from the university down here, get to your destination, and look at all of these people. Let's just make sure that it's working as it should. And it looks like it's it's okay. I think that we want to take a look. Now it's it's tough. You know, I don't want to take too much from what I'm seeing right now and just you know assume that everything's broken because <laughs> it might just need to clear its queue. Whoa, there are some things happening right here. Wow. So that is in the tourism district. Lots of people getting on, getting past. That's not good. Um, well, I think we just might have to crank it. Although you can see, maybe I shouldn't get too crazy because there's a whole bunch of vehicles coming. And this is one of those things where if you start making too many adjustments at once, you can see that you're going to make mistakes. Uh, now, I see that there are just a ton of vehicles that are mostly not full with uh, a, a, an empty station right there. So you can imagine that some people are going to get off at this station. These vehicles are going to, you know, 25, 50. It chips away at it. It's not loading up quickly, which is kind of the thing I'm noticing. People are certainly going on, but... We've got a lot of capacity, so something to keep an eye on, but maybe not the problem. And ultimately, what I'm most interested in is we take a look right here. We're okay. We're okay right here. So um, let's see. And truthfully, now that I'm looking, it looks like things have mostly calmed down. I don't even need any further investigation. I think it's just I know it's okay. So we're going to leave this. That's a good improvement in my mind. So I think we're done with Metro uh, for the time being. There's certainly always more that could be done though. But what I want to do right now is focus on some of this, some of the zoning in this area. So uh, there's not going to be a ton that we can do here. You know, we can get, we can get really fiddly with this uh, and try to snake a road back here. Not really worth it. I think what's what probably makes the most sense would be to have focus on path connections in certain areas and just fill in our zoning because i think that we've invested enough in infrastructure that there's not really a lot else that we can do so right here for instance i think that there's value in having a pedestrian connection all the way behind here we'll connect right there and then turn our angle on come back here i would have strongly preferred to not decrease the density there but it's okay we can we can deal with a little bit of that N no we can't <laughs> all 
there we go that's better <laughs> just, it's one of those things where i think i'm gonna be okay but after i think about it a little bit longer i realize no i'm not gonna be okay i can't i can't accept that now on the thought of pedestrian connectivity before we start developing this i want to think about um, the pedestrian connectivity i'm gonna need city services i might need and not need to demolish everything to make all of that happen so in reality you're not going to have a do-over you know you might wish you had a do-over <laughs> but you're stuck with with what you have so let's get these path connections in now while we have the opportunity so that was a, a really important connection there i think or it has the potential of being one uh, one thing i'm noticing is we really still lack connectivity roadway connectivity through here so that was kind of a missed opportunity and if we don't have that we probably should focus on transit let's get back to this area for a second after i fill in zoning here so we our rci meters are in a wonderful place let's look at our our, our utilities yeah, we got to get some water pipes in. we got to fix the ones that are no longer underneath the road just in places where they don't belong okay so i think now we are completely covered so let's look at our existing zoning in this area so you see over here we have a lot of industrial for some reason we missed the spot there probably some historical artifact uh, and then we have some of these areas over here where we could probably have office or something of that nature that would fit really well back here maybe even look at some of our unique buildings Yeah, I don't want to just throw these back here, which is what I would ultimately be doing. So what I think we're going to do is just kind of leave this. We will have some spur roads and cul-de-sacs to fill in back here. Let's go and do what we know we're going to do right off the, off the bat. So I think coming into Verde Beach, we don't want a corridor of density. So we're going to keep everything fairly low density along this corridor and use commercial as kind of the buffer between the residential and industrial uses and everything else <laughs> so now i'm going to take a quick beat because I, I i think i almost made a mistake and that mistake is as i'm going through here just zoning up a storm totally forgot about my path connections so again targeted path connections where they make sense where they shorten up block lengths where you have these mega blocks so right here hills uh Hillside Street, terrible name, and Keller House. These two, that's like a double block. So if you could have a pedestrian sneak through, even though we don't have a crossing here, they might be able to get to the front of one of these buildings over here. So there's still value in that connection and you shouldn't skip it. So same thing right here, actually. This is another prime example of that. Why not have a connection here so that people could get to the monorail station? So here they are at the monorail station because we gave them a, an opportunity to, to be at it. So let's finish up our commercial zoning along this corridor. And then along main here, we're gonna extend the previous zoning, which was commercial and kind of fill in this entire area. This was a, a commercial node. And I think that we have most of what we want for commercial. Now, one of the interesting things is, is Glade Street. Nah, that's not right. So Station Road, Hunter Street, right there. We'll extend Station Road all the way to this Hunter Hunter Street loop. I might rename this. This will be Hunter Court uh, or Hunter Crescent probably makes even more sense. So I've always kind of envisioned this to be a more commercial or industrial type corridor and industry doesn't make sense anymore but this i might actually have this be an office corridor at this point i think that that makes a ton of sense you have uh this you have uh, this station here providing a ton of access uh, to the rest of the city not really a desirable place to live <laughs> clearly um maybe we'll have a couple of pockets of commercial in here as well And then we absolutely need to divide up our block lengths here. This is this is way too long. Now, even though this doesn't really matter, we're going to do it anyway. 
because it would allow people who are walking to get to the front of the other streets. And that is a huge help. I think we should probably do the same thing over here before it develops. And we're kind of stuck right here with what we have. Right here, we can certainly add a connection. And be, uh, I'm gonna turn this into a kind of a mini TOD. I am gonna have a, a couple of residential uses here. Not, not many, but some. And then over here, we'll take it down to a lower density commercial use again. The other thing we could do, maybe I'll do this instead. Let's go through here. We are going to create a small neighborhood. So this will be Keller House Heights. And the reason I want this here is because I want to have that height restriction. I think I have it everywhere. But over here, I'm going to also create a neighborhood and I'm going to remove that height restriction. So in the TOD, Transit Oriented Development, we will allow just a little bit more density. This will be station heights. <laughs> and over here, I kind of want to look at the policies and, and really give this some thought. So, first of all, there's no... Ooh, actually, I could do something neat here. So, I could take... No, no, I can't. <laughs> it's going to ban heavy traffic, but that's a bad idea because we do have some commercial there. If we didn't, I could ban heavy traffic, which would make this at least a little bit quieter. Um, but I, I don't really want to do that. So in Station Heights, I want to have high-tech housing. We are also going to take a look at some of our other... So our high-rise ban, we'll get rid of that. And I'm going to lower the tax rates here. So I really want to focus on this as an area that gets developed quickly. And we have a little bit more to fill in. I think I might allow some development on Station Road now that we're further away. From the train track, it seems like it would be a more desirable place to live. This is a little iffy, but okay. And we're going to need some sound buffering back here, so we're going to need to be really careful with our zoning. But for the rest of it, I'm not all that concerned. And really what I'm going to do is just kind of go back here and remove a line of zoning so I can add a landscape buffer. Over here we're okay. We're going to want landscaping along the highway too to prevent some of that noise from spilling over. So this is another area where I think that we could potentially see some development in the future. And maybe, I, mean, we do, I guess we do have that one local connection. It's probably good enough. Interestingly, we could see that we used to have this interchange here because of what the fences are doing. And I think that we could eliminate that now. And this, this opens up land for future development. Although uh, a developer would have to buy out one of these landowners to make it possible. And now that we've added Vine Street, we also have some kind of crazy stuff going on down here. And again, Vine is acting as a collector based on the way it's set up. So I'm going to treat it like a collector. We're going to have lots of commercial uses along this collector. And that's a good point. Uh, something that I haven't really spent a lot of time talking about. When is a local road a collector? And when is it a, uh, or when is a two lane road a collector? Uh, and you kind of see the way that this road is functioning. It's collecting this traffic from the arterials and taking it into the local area. So if you needed to get to Myrtle Park, anywhere in Myrtle Park, uh, be it Layden Campbell Street or Mill Street, you're taking Vine Street. No option. You have to. Um, so that, I guess the other option would be Jones Street. Um, so both of those are collecting traffic from that those that, that arterial. Um, and that arterial, I mean, that's the road. If you want to come into the city, you've got to use it. Um, so that's kind of a really simplified explanation. That, that deeper dive into it would be taking a look at access spacing, which you can see we've got one, two, and then this, and then this. So there's not much access to this road. Uh, the other thing that we would take a look at would be speed. And I'd love, if I had TMPE, to, uh, I, I would certainly increase the speed of Vine a bit. Although we would really strode it up then, which maybe we don't want to do. Um, having the lower speed is probably better for that. Uh, that said, I, t I tell you what, this would there'd be a speeding problem here. Because 
of the lack of junctions. It would feel like you could uh, go faster, particularly if the roads were a little bit wider, which you can see they are here because of the parking lane. So ideally, truthfully, we would probably take this and remove that parking to try to reinforce that this is a road you gotta drive slower on. So maybe it's not necessary in the game, but it makes me feel better. So <laughs> that's why we're gonna do it. So now we've got these things over here developing. Stuff over here is happening. Let's go over here. So I talked about this being in an in, in office type area. So let's solidify that now. So I don't want to throw, oh, whoops, wrong zoning. So I don't want to throw zoning in here just because I can. I think that that would be a place that would clearly not have zoning, so I'm going to leave it. The reason why it wouldn't have zoning is it's probably public right-of-way. So we also have this decorative thing happening here at this weird middle street. I think I'm going to deviate from that idea, at least partially, but I'm going to leave it here. There's a place for decoration and a place for uh, placemaking. And that, that, I mean, that's the sort of thing that makes a place. So we're gonna do the exact same thing here. Try to not disturb some of that existing landscaping and leave that behind. So you can see this area is already starting to fill in and it definitely feels different than the rest of this area. But I think it's going to feel, you know, better in a, in a, in a different in a good way. <laughs> so that was why we've done this and it will spur transit trips. We're not really seeing a heck of a lot of passenger utilization here. See, we got five people on this train. Like that's pretty brutal. And I think that that's going to change now that we've uh, spurred some activity here. So I do want to get some landscaping back here. And after we're done with that, I want to move on to some other things. So we've got our landscaping buffer. Might need to do more with that in the future. But right now with all of the areas that we've zoned, we are kind of hurting for demand. That said, no reason not to decorate a bit when we have the opportunity to do so. So uh, back here is another area where we could do two things all at once. We could decorate and we could improve uh, how this industry area is operating. And I'm truthfully kind of surprised that I didn't add trees down this strip here. So I might do that as well since I'm in the area. So we're going to pretend that all of that monoculture happened uh, at a time before um, you know, contemporary <laughs> arbor arborist techniques became a thing. Uh, right now, we would we would never want to plant that much of the same type of tree in one location. The issues that you could see would be that a disease could come in and wipe out all of those trees at once, especially if the species diversity is not, you know, uh, especially if the uh, particular trees that are planted are clones of one another. And now this is not something that they teach in planning school. This is something that your wife talks to you about a lot <laughs> because it's her interest area. And uh, because of that, whoa, I've got a lot overboard. <laughs> but I just got, I got in the zone. So you get in the zone, you do some things. And uh, what I've done is create a fire hazard, a dense forest protecting Keller House, from the dirty, dirty, dirty forestry industry. <laughs> the well-lit, dirty, dirty, dirty forestry industry. It is Verde Beach, so we should have some palm trees. You never know if a tourist is going to come down here and decide to check out the native industry. Maybe uh, the Lewis Company actually has walking tours, and that's what happens back here. You walk, you get to see all the palm trees from some of the palm trees, you know, and they talk about their palm tree farms. Yeah, I like that. Now, one thing I did not check, and I'm gonna pause it. I talked a big game about making sure we have city services, and then I just did, did nothing about it. So we don't have a lot of need right now, but we don't have a lot of coverage either, which will be a problem in the future. So even though our availability for schools is, is quite good, I'm still gonna add a school to this area. High school availability is less good. 
So we definitely want to have a high school here. We have an opportunity here, I think, to, to have a you know, fairly decent campus. Maybe not. So I'm going to add this here and we'll add a park next to each of these. By park, I mean basketball court. We'll use eminent domain in that house. <laughs> Actually, we won't. No, we will. Yep, we're going to use eminent domain in that house. I'm really sorry about that. I I, I didn't... Uh, that, that was uh, me forgetting a little bit of what my plans were. Uh, we also want need a dog park. Obviously, the, the developer has decided to sweeten the pot for the neighborhood and uh, said, you know, what we're going to do here is have the very best dog park in all of Verde Beach. And over here, we're going to have a large park for the school. Um, so this will act not just as a Well, actually, we're going to do two. It won't let me place it. That drives me crazy. So this street's just a little bit off. This is one of those weird vanilla things where it just, when I was shaking around, I could see that it, it was okay with it at one point, but most of the time it's not. We're going to place this across the street. That's a terrible spot, um, but that is a vanilla limitation. We're going to have lots of parks here. They'll probably use this one. This one's actually the one that is intended for school use. Yeah, truthfully, we'll just eminent domain again. Well, might as well uh, keep that eminent domain train on track. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we're just gonna we're gonna keep going. We'll move this over there, and we are gonna pretend that this was a planning session. Planners got together and uh, decided to to, to 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 really think about this area. And uh, you know, your your first idea isn't always your best. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I think it would be really neat to have this high school with some forest behind it, you know, a, a kind of a, a, a laboratory for the students here. So very, very neat situation for them. So we have some of these roads that we could be extending through. So I want to take care of that now. And the neat thing is you can see that by reusing some of these old names, we're able to basically be in a spot where we only have one street name that we need to come up with in this area that's elk street and i think we're just going to name it school road because there are two schools on it there we go and the needs of this area are served except for potentially health care so since this isn't a super desirable area anyway being so close to all these train tracks we're going to add in this back here that'll serve this area well and then we should take a look at death care too. Yeah, we're probably okay with death care. And uh, then the thing I always forget about is postal service. Now I think it's covered here, but it wouldn't be bad just to kind of poke around a little bit. How are we doing with postal coverage? Got some areas that are really rough, including right here, uh, right on Main Street. And this is an opportunity in my mind we will make sure that Old Verde Beach has a post office. Is there anywhere else that we could sneak one of these in? Man, our coverage in some of these areas is horrendous. And I'll tell you the last thing you're going to use do is use eminent domain for a post office. <laughs> Unless you're in Verde Beach, then we will. <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm going to leave it there. I think I think we could we could certainly use more but there's more that we're going to do on this coast at some point. I've already sandboxed it, and I don't want to get ahead of myself today. Okay. So we've got our zoning filled in all except for here. A little bit more that we could fill in here. Some residential. Kind of complete that residential block that was there. We should be good. I could zone along here. But we've got these this thick bunch of trees, and I think that that... You've got to, you know, kind of make a compromise sometimes with these things. So this is another area where what is the most <laughs> logical here? And I think it's clearly we're going to want to keep that in industry area. So that said, we would need a neighborhood area to keep this the correct industry. And I think I want to avoid that. So we'll just have some offices with their high-rise van back here. These offices will serve the industry area anyway. 
in uh, in our estimation, and some of these other industrial uh, things that are happening back here. So that is a good change in my mind. There's just all of these little oddities here that I'm seeing with zoning. They're going to drive me batty. <laughs> so I'm kind of going through and as I'm scanning and seeing these things, I just got, I feel like I have to make a change. Okay. So let's get on to our helicopters. So helicopters, here's the interesting thing that I'm unsure about. And I, I have not sandboxed this portion of the build. So I want to have a helicopter stop. Uh, there, I want to have one near the university, kind of in this area. I want to take a look at the amount of space this takes up, and I, you know, I don't want to have that right in the university yet. Yeah, it's, it's a kind of a tough build. I might stick it back here, and then you could at least use. Wow, that is brutal. That is brutal. We're gonna we're gonna hide that with some landscaping <laughs> because do not like how that looks at all. It actually terraforms the cemetery. Okay, that's at least a little better in terms of not destroying the cemetery. Okay, so we've got this helicopter stop here. I'd love to have one in the tourism area. It's just, it's really built out. So unless we have it right on the coast, there's not really an opportunity. So I think we are gonna add it right on the coast. And then the part that I'm unsure of is, does the airport act as a hub? So we're gonna find that out. So I wanna avoid going over the zoo if at all possible. So we're gonna do some theatrics. We're gonna to have to go over the zoo a little bit. I'm sorry, that enclosure is gonna be so sad. Uh, now we're gonna see if we can actually yeah, I can't, I can't construct the helicopter line. So that tells me that I do need to build my hub, my depot rather. So we are gonna place this over our, in our industrial area. It's a fairly logical spot to add this in, in my estimation. The problem is, do we really wanna get this near all of this equipment here? I would assume that this would ha interrupt some of the frequency. Ooh, what is this? Taxes are too high. Whoops. I wanted to actually give tax relief for offices, not raise their taxes. So they all develop these shiny towers here only to have them. Wow, these are terrible. That is not what I wanted at all. So I am gonna take this down a notch. I don't want any of these huge towers popping up. I think it's completely unnatural in this area. You can't taper up to it, which is kind of something that you should focus on. Um, I, I was focusing on a corridor, which is another thing to think about rather than blocks, but just don't like the way this worked. Eminent domain to take down those towers because your building form was off. <laughs> so hopefully these master architects will remain at this uh, at this level and I think that they're going to so I'm okay with some of these residential buildings getting bigger I just feel like those uh, those office buildings get way too big way too modern looking way too crazy and I'm, I'm not into it so we're gonna we're gonna skip that okay so back to where we were helicopter Depot I really don't like that location but I don't know that we have a ton of other options short of putting it way out here, which might not be the worst idea. Maybe out here. So this is going to be loading onto a, really this is functioning as an arterial if I place it directly on there. So what I might do is just add a local road over here. I'm going to make sure we have our city services over here. And then power is also missing. We'll name that street and then come in here. And I think we need to connect this up to our route. So we'll throw our angle back on. And then I think what we're gonna do is try to make sure that we're not interrupting what's happening with the TV station all that much. 
and run this over here. So now we can make our connections. So the idea with this route was we'll get people from the airport to the university. Maybe you have some, some folks coming in from uh, different countries representing different universities and they there's it's really timely that they, they, they need to get directly to the university and the tourism district is thinking well maybe there's very wealthy people who want to get there <laughs> so i don't know how that's going to work we're going to find out that's uh, kind of an interesting thing to take a look at so we'll we'll leave that for now and i think we're in a very good spot with that now, i mentioned myrtle park and the and some of the things happening here with buses before so there are two things I want to fix here. So we have the Myrtle Park transfer point, which it's great, but I think that I made one mistake. And that mistake is if you're thinking about buses, and you, you should really be thinking, is this just a city transfer point or is it actually an inner city bus terminal? And I think it's actually an inner city bus terminal. And I'm going to tell you why in just a second. So if you, if you look at the location, we have great access to the highway right here. So as long as we had decent enough, or as long as we have an inner city bus station here, it would work quite well. We have one down in Old Verde Beach. Truthfully, that doesn't make a ton of sense anymore. Uh, it doesn't have freeway access like it used to. You gotta remember it used to be right on Keller House and now it's not, so. I've added this in, rotated it around. It's on Florence Street. Now we need to look at our bus routes. Since this is an inner city terminal, we can move some of our local routes in there. And now you can see all of this, all of these routes meeting up in, in one location. Now the one thing I forgot to do last time when I was making the routes is I wanted to create an express route all the way to a high capacity form of transit. So we're gonna do that right here. They'll be able to get off directly at where all of these stations are coming together and then ping right back here. One seat ride, nowhere to stop, just to go directly there. So I think that that is a huge improvement. Uh, big shout out to Planner Pete, Discord server, Patreon, uh, pa Patreon patron, uh, and an all around good guy. He is uh, constantly uh, coming up with great ideas and I uh, really appreciate that there are other uh, planners in the Discord server that I can bounce ideas off from, and, and everyone else as well. But uh, having a place to talk with other planners is, is really fun for me too. So, so this is gonna make this a much more valuable facility. And I really like the aesthetic too. I think it's a neat looking facility. So we have this other one over here. This is the older one. Let's take a look. It's cool too. It's the Metro Inner City Bus Hub. We're gonna leave that. Uh, there's no harm in having it there, I don't think. Um, you would imagine that the value that you'd see in this one would be that university students could come here instead of going all the way over here and catching a bunch of transfers to get to where they need to go. So last but not least, let's take a look at our university. As I mentioned, we have a couple of issues there. I don't know that I call them issues. We just never leveled everything up the way that we could have. So we're gonna deal with that now. So first things first, chess club, that's an easy one. We're gonna place this right near the aquatic center. Um, <laughs> it just fits. <laughs> and we're gonna have the, uh, the, the second statue over here as well with a nice view right here all the way to the, uh, the intersection of Semper Verde and Keller House. And what I think we're gonna do there is we're just gonna leave it open. And we're going to not zone here. We should probably extend our university fencing over. Just kind of cleaning things up a little bit and then we'll get some landscaping in here to really, uh, really light things up in this area. And we'll just, I think we're gonna leave it there. Well, well, well no, we, we, we have that palm trees. We'll line this with palm trees. So you get a, a view. You look through here and you get to see the back of that statue. <laughs> Perfect, huh? Just what you wanted to see. 
<laughs> All right, so the last thing we need to do is get our last building in the campus. So that building is our School of Science. We're gonna probably need some dorms to go along with this as well. Like our media lab, we've already got one of those. I just let me go through some of these buildings quickly to make sure we have them all. Interesting, so I thought that we had a media lab here, but we do not. So I think I'm gonna add a media lab here as well. And that should clearly be on the main campus. Oh boy, there is no place to fit this in. Maybe right here. Also trying to see if we have laboratories. I don't think that we have. We have the School of Medicine. And so I think we're gonna take our laboratories as well and move those over. We'll have a library over there as well. So, and then some dorms. So we're gonna just, what we're gonna do is extend our area over so we have our university campus area what we can do is just have a little tentacle that goes over here and what we're going to do with this tentacle is just extend it over here and now we can actually remove this tentacle I, interestingly i think i used the wrong oh that is interesting so you can't have a campus and a park area in the same place. And I guess that makes sense. Kind of, except that we're doing that, so. <laughs> All right, so we have our campus area here. So I think that we're gonna formalize this by having some nicer roads coming up here. And then I want to formalize this park as well. We're not gonna build it just yet. But I am going to have a nature reserve main gate. Oh, that is just a killer. So we're going to use some eminent domain <laughs> because I want this gate to be perfectly centered on the road and I can't do it unless it's straight coming off here. Hopefully two tiles is enough. Let's see. And I can't perfectly center it anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I guess you, you, you make some choices sometimes. Not always good. All right, so we have this here. You'll come up and you'll be able to focus on how this is not straight. And it'll drive me crazy. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, I hate that so much. <laughs> That's gonna drive me absolutely bonkers, but I'm gonna just try to ignore it. So over here, we we could just have some local roads. This is gonna act as a local road, but I think I still want to come off from here anyway. We're not even gonna do roads. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is do some of the university paths through here. And the very first thing I want to place is the School of Science. Let's leave one tile space for landscaping. And it's, it's good that this building is interesting on all sides. Four-sided architecture, that's the way to do it. And, uh, you know, a school is definitely not going to skimp on that, thankfully. Now, there are a few other buildings that we're going to want over here. So we, we're going to want our, I, I think it would make sense to have a number of buildings. So the laboratory over here, uh, it's tough to have a science building without a laboratory. We're going to want a place to study. This is, this is really far removed from our other campus. So I think we actually need to have a number of our campus buildings over here again. But I do want to leave opportunities. We're going to connect some of these roads up to our nature reserve in the future. So I think we'll need another groundskeeping, but we'll do that at the very end. We don't need a gymnasium. We will need a cafeteria to make sure people can eat. I think a library again. This is one of those buildings that you know, we already have a library, but you could imagine this library being focused on scientific literature, not just a general purpose library. And the very last thing we need are a few dorms over here. So I think again, we're going to leave that one 
tile gap. Just have a couple of dorms, not anything, not anything significant over here. So a nice tight little campus and we're going to keep it like that. Now I am going to include some spur roads off from here or spur paths rather. And then I think we're going to fence this in to formalize this as the campus area. But let's use a nature reserve fence here. Okay, so some really putsy stuff here. Just wanted to make sure that we are uh, really going to have a nice transition between these areas. Because it might not be an inspired design, but I think that we're going to have a very, very nice transition between the two of these. So, this is very utilitarian in nature, and that is by design. The idea is that we don't want this... We don't want the design of this campus to overwhelm the purpose of the university in this area um, and to, to really overstate the, the nature reserve uh, or seem overstated in, in relation to the nature reserve. So I am creating this, this kind of network of nature reserve pads around here. That is just to have a consistent end. And now in the future, when we go to connect up, the stubs will all be about the same line. And I, I want to make this not seem like the most desirable way to get into the nature reserve. Let's look at our topography. Yeah, there's not much here. Um, I want to have a mini path to, to, to kind of start that connection. So I'm going to just do a little bit here. Because there's not much in the way of topography, we're going to follow the little bit that we have just to create a unique trail connection. A trail layout, rather. Truthfully, as I look at this connection here, it's probably not all that necessary. So we're going to eliminate one of those connections. And we'll use this as an opportunity for landscaping. And we'll deal with this other connection in the future. Continue to do just a little bit here. Okay, so you might have wondered why I'm using the lit paths. And the main reason for that is because this is a campus area, I think that the campus would prefer to ensure that their students are safe with a well-lit path. So at night, this will be illuminated, but that's, that's by design, at least for the time being. We'll see if I change my mind in the future. And I think I'm just gonna continue one more. So we've got a trail network through here, and a lot of this is gonna just remain trail network. We aren't currently going, but let's resume and let this go. Add some landscaping into the campus area. Probably should get some water pipes underneath our roads though, or our paths in this, in this instance. And this is right of way through here. We're never going to develop a lot in between High and Withers Drive. So we are completely fine with those remaining as they are. And with the right of way or with the uh, water pipes going right through there. Okay, so down the line, you can imagine more happening here and this being a more uh, uh, kind of a unique area. I think it'd be, be neat to have a botanical garden in this area, something that we make more than just that one building that that uh, that is sometimes used for the gardens. Uh, I do want to finish this up in just a second. And the way that I'm going to finish it up is actually by taking this district and converting it to a green city's district. Uh, I think that this would make a ton of sense being near this area to have a completely green district and we'll have some housing for the professors. So along Gobi Street, we're going to have some commercial, same thing along Vine, the real Vine, not the fake Vine that was on the other side of the city. We'll have to fix that soon. <laughs> And we're just going to add a couple of areas with some residential development. And you could go right from teaching at the university into the elder care facility, <laughs> if, that's, if that was your goal. Because we're over here thinking about this, we should also think about child care or child health care. We already have one, so we're good there. I think that uh, 
This is a good improvement in this area. We could probably zone this entire area out. And I think we're gonna keep it within this boundary and this'll be mostly university serving. And our population hasn't grown a ton today, but it's grown some and I think that uh, we're in a better spot with the city as a whole. Little pockets of interest like this, I think are really beneficial. Look at this, we have so many university students in the city now. Our dorms, not a lot of students here. Take a look at our campus in general. It's very good, it's very good. So I like what the, the, the changes that we've made today. And I think it leaves me in a spot where I feel a little bit more comfortable crossing the crossing the river. There were some other things I wanted to do with ferries. Um, I think that that might fit better with some of the other plans I have. Um, across the river, over here, up here. I got I got I got some ideas. So uh, I'm gonna leave that for the next one. This is the final episode where we are limited to this geography over here. We are soon going to be crossing the river, extending our, our reach into this island over here. And I think it's gonna be really fun. But let's quickly take a look at how things have progressed today. This neighborhood, filling in, looking good. Our TOD, density, looking good. We didn't get back here, that's okay. We'll get there at some point, Not doesn't need to be today. We got our little pocket of office over here. Fits in well. I think it, I think it, it fits. And uh, in general, I think the city has moved in a, in a good direction. So, so I realized that I made a couple of big mistakes and I want to fix those quickly. So number one, I never made a connection to the university. <laughs> so I think we're gonna make two of those. That's a, a huge improvement. And number two, I never showed you how successful or not we were with uh, some of our new transit. So first, here's our inner city bus terminal. 333 passengers a week. That is pretty darn good. We're up to almost 7,000 passengers a week on transit in total. And let's see how we were doing over here. What? Are you kidding me? That is crazy. I did not expect that. Uh, so apparently our helicopters are very popular and everyone wants to fly on the helicopters. So the more you know, the more you know. I don't know how to to, to look at this more though, because when I go into transit, it's just kind of consider. Okay, right here. Wow, we have hundreds of people waiting. You can only take 20 at a time. Okay, we're gonna need to just crank this. Helicopters everywhere. <laughs> and hopefully this helps. Yeah, I don't love the way that looks. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a lot of people in these lines. I guess this is very popular. So hopefully the added, the added, uh, number of, of flights will, will will help. I truly did not expect this to be this kind of popular. This is wild. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, wow. I guess it's all tourists though. I mean, it's 31 tourists over here. Yeah, tourists everywhere. So very good. Well, we'll take it. And there are just probably a line of helicopters flying out, trying to get over here. Let's, uh, let's see, helicopter depot. Yeah. <laughs> this looks absolutely crazy. They're just one after another, after another, getting in here and flying away. You can just see the line of them. That noise would drive people absolutely crazy. Well, good thing the only people you can bug over here are the dead. Not a fun place to wait though. Not a fun place to wait. All right, we'll cut back to the regular video. I'm gonna leave it here. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider hitting that like button. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you wanna be notified when I release new videos, hit that notification icon. 
I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. You can see their names here. They help me improve the channel by upgrading my equipment and generally uh, improving the way that I'm doing things. Um, and I want to thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Your likes, subscribes, and shares uh, help increase the reach of the channel, and it is much appreciated. Um, I'm going to leave you with a brief city tour like I always do. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.